Poodle, how do we make an open dog mouth? Let's find out. Hey, it's Pam and it's a Thursday, so it's another needle felting tutorial. Every Thursday I make videos like this, so if this is something you're interested in, don't forget to come back every Thursday. So a couple of weeks ago we learned how to make a closed mouth for a dog sculpture. If you haven't already seen the video, it's in the cards up above. And today, let's have a look at how to make an open mouth. Now the scale we're working at, I would say to make the nose in the colour that you're going to be making the final dog in rather than making it in the core wall. Which in the case of this dog unfortunately means I'm using tops so it's not quite so easy to sculpt. So what you do to get tops to be a little more usable, I'm just taking the fibres and fluffing them up, pulling them up over the top of each other and restacking and just getting the fibres going in a little more unordered direction, it just makes it a little easier to felt. And then I'm going to turn that into a tube just by wrapping it round into a sausage shape basically. And we just want to look at the breed of the dog that we're looking for to find out how fat or thin or long or short the muzzle is and where it's placed on the actual dog's face, how much of a stop the, the dog's face has and positioning the muzzle on accordingly and then just felt 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 all round to get it smooth and attached to the body. The difference with this with the regular dog is what we're putting on just now is just the upper jaw so what I like to do is felt into decide where the bottom of the muzzle is going to be and I'm going to felt a lot into that to make it hollow to make it curve up the way just to give the inside of the mouth. This gives a lot more stability into the shape and arches a really strong shape and although it generally isn't seen it makes me feel better it's mouth shaped inside the mouth. So just spend a good bit of time making sure that's nice and smooth and as firm as you can. bottom lip we're just going to take a smaller piece of fleece and I'm folding it and I'm folding it over a couple of times to make it a little bit thicker and I'm wanting to and I'm wanting to felt a kind of u-shape into it where it's going to be narrower at the top narrower at the front of the jaw and getting wider towards the back and I'm just really carefully felting this between my fingers. I know this looks really precarious, but the needle's going along in between my fingers and at no point is it actually poking down towards my fingers. And this is actually quicker than felting into a felting surface like a cushion, because what I, what's happening is I'm taking the fibers from where the lip's going to be from the lip end and felting them into the body of the piece so for each stab there's felting going on all the way through this jaw whereas if you were stabbing down onto a surface you're only getting for each single stab you're only getting a small area actually felting and a lot of the fibers are going through and into the felting surface. So this way every stab is sort of doing more work so I find it much easier. But if you want to you can do this flat on a stabbing surface just remember keep turning it over and over. So you want to keep measuring this up to your to your upper jaw all the time to get an idea how it's doing size wise and if you're needing it to be shorter you stab into the top, if you're needing it to be narrower you stab into the sides. We want it to be just a little bit bigger than the upper jaw just now. And then to attach it, we're just going to wrap round slightly so there's an overlap so that the, the back of the mouth overlaps the top of the jaw. And this is starting to give it a bit of a smile because if the dog's mouth's gonna be open, we're gonna want the sculpture to look happy. So we felt that all in, all round the back of the jaw so that it's nicely attached and then you're just going to be opening up the jaw and felting it into position, felting down the length of the jaw to get it to the right length. Just manipulating it with your fingers into the shapes that you want, blending down the lines where the two bits of jaw meet 
and just making sure it's a nice smooth shape in in how you want it to look. Just keep looking at it and if it needs more stabbing in any area just stab more in that area. And the final touch with an open jaw tends to be just adding a tongue. This just gives it even more character and it looks even cuter. So with a small amount of pink, I'm just doing similar to what we did with the lower jaw, except for this time it's just going to be a straight U with a curve at the bottom. So it's like two parallel sides and a curve finishing it off and a little bit narrower than the jaw as well. And we're just gonna pop that in on top and let the tongue hang down and it adds cuteness. And this is what you finish up with once you finish the rest of your dog. It just gives a little bit more life and character into your dog. He's got a nice open jaw with his tongue poking out. Just practice felting about with it. Find out how much fibre you need for the lower jaw, how much fibre you need for the tongue. And practice felting really carefully between your fingers to make sure and not hurt yourself. So I hope that was useful for you. If it was, don't forget to come back every Thursday. Click on my wee face to subscribe. And up here, here's a video that YouTube's picked just for you to watch. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week.